Thanks for watching. And this video is part of a new series called How I Teach, in which I show you how I teach a certain concept, such as today I'll do triple integrals. So let's start. So today, let's try to evaluate the triple integral of the function 2z over the region between the paraboloids z equals x squared plus y squared plus 2 and z equals 10 minus x squared minus y squared. At this point, I usually like to motivate this by saying if 2z were the density of an object, then the triple integral is the mass of the object. It's more palpable this way than to explain hypervolume, which I did try to do. And when I teach triple integrals, I emphasize three things. Pictures, inequalities, and integrate. Because using those three methods, using those three steps, you can actually evaluate, in my opinion, any kind of uh, triple integral problem, and even double integral ones. OK, so let's start by drawing the picture. And I do recommend drawing the picture by hand. I know some people, they show computer graphics. But remember, on the exams, the students have to draw their own pictures. And not only that, I noticed that when I draw the picture, it helps the students see which part is important and which is not. So kind of more of a qualitative way. So it's definitely not a waste of time, unlike what students think. OK, so here's the xyz plane. Yz. And what do we want to draw? We want to draw, first of all, x squared plus y squared plus 2, which is a paraboloid shifted up by two units. And so let's draw it in color, and you'll see why. So this is z equals x squared plus y squared plus 2. And on the other hand, 10 minus x squared minus y squared, that is the upside down parabola, perhaps like that. z equals 10 minus x squared minus y squared. And then what do we have? We have the x-shaped region between those two. So this is our function e. And again, what we want to do, we want to find the mass of that object e where you know, the density is just a function 2z. OK, so we're done with the picture part, which gives us an idea of what things look like. And now we want to find the inequalities. Step two, inequalities. And first, we need to figure out what direction the region is facing in. But since here we have z equals something and z equals something, it actually faces the z direction. Which means we have to do z first. And in that case, z is between the smaller function and the bigger function, or between top and bottom. And the question is, what is the smaller function and what is the bigger function? Usually, it's hard to determine just purely with the formula. But here is where our picture and our colors help. Because the bigger function here is a function in red. And the function is red in red is precisely 10 minus x squared minus y squared. So 10 minus x squared minus y squared. And the smaller function is the one in blue, which is x squared plus y squared plus 2. Now, I really like this example because it illustrates not only triple integrals, but it also illustrates cylindrical coordinates. So it's super flexible. And in fact, here, let's do it with cylindrical coordinates. Because x squared plus y squared plus 2 that becomes z equals r squared plus 2. And 10 minus x squared minus y squared, that is z, is 10 minus r squared. And that's the point of cylindrical coordinates. It's just to simplify things. OK, so in particular with z, this becomes z between r squared plus 2 and 10 minus r squared. 
this is good and now we need to find x and y okay. and for this we need to figure out the region where x and y lie in which is usually called d so this is the region d and how do you find this region d well there's usually two ways of finding it either you said z equals zero when your region is attached to the xy plane or here a little bit easier notice d is given precisely by the intersection of those uh, two surfaces. So in this case, all we need to figure out is when is r squared plus 2 equal to 10 minus r squared. All right, so r squared plus 2 equals 10 minus r squared. We can solve it. So I think 2r squared equals 8. So r squared equals 4. But here the radius is positive. So r is 2. And so what does that tell you our region looks like in terms of x and y? It literally tells you that it's a circle of radius 2. So this is your region D here. And of course, in this case, it's nicer to write in polar or cylindrical coordinates. So what do we have? R is between 0 and 2. And then the angle theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And those are our other inequalities. And now we're ready to just put them together. So our inequalities in the end is z is between r squared plus 2 and 10 minus r squared, r between 0 and 2, and then theta between 0 and 2 pi. And definitely rewrite this, it will help us with our integration. Because now we are ready to integrate. So what did you want to do? The triple integral of 2z in dx dy dz. And do emphasize that the function usually has nothing to do with the region. Those are two different things. And now that we have our inequalities, we can finally plug things in. So z is between r squared plus 2 and 10 minus r squared. r is between 0 and 2. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi. 2z. And again, first comes z. And then r is between 0 and 2. Theta is between 0 and 2 pi. And do not forget the super, super important factor here, which is R. So really think like a pirate, like R, dr, d theta. So, and by the way, I did this and then barely anyone forgot about the R, which is great. And then you can evaluate that the same way you do you know, your double integrals. Uh, I will skip the calculations just for sake of time, but I believe there's some other video uh, covering this example in more detail. And I believe in the end, if you do this, you get 192 pi. So emphasize it again. The mass of this object is 192 pi. So a lot of delicious pies. And Finally, to conclude, I want to show you some of my favorite uh, triple integral problems, of which, again, there are some videos on my channel as well. So the triple integral of 6z, where e is a tetrahedron in the first octant, bounded by this plane. And that's when you just uh, do it with the intercepts. So you first find the xyz intercepts, and you get the tetrahedron. And then you find z between the smaller function and the bigger function. And you find d by simply setting, either using the intercepts or setting uh, z equals 0. And this one is particularly nice. The answer simplifies quite nicely if you do a couple of u subs. So that's the first one. The next one is the following. The next one is simply to find the volume of a region where the region is bounded by y equals x squared, z equals 1 minus y, and z equals 0. This one's nice because it illustrates volume as a triple integral of 1. And also, it's slightly hard to draw. But essentially, what it looks like, it's like a Gouda cheese, Hoda cheese. 
And again, there's a video on that on my channel as well. The next one has to do with different directions. So try to find a triple integral of three or any function you want where the region is bounded by the cylinder x squared plus z squared equals four and the planes y equals minus one and y plus z equals four. Then what it looks like, it looks like a canolo or cannoli like this. And this is a great illustration of what happens when you have something in the y direction. And last but not least, my favorite example of them all, triple integral of square root of y squared plus z squared, where e is a region bounded by the cylinder y squared plus z squared equals 9, and the planes x equals 0 and y equals 3x. I like this one because it illustrates the x direction, and it's, again, particularly hard to draw, but kind of what it looks like just looks like a little princess cake, like this. And um, it's a very versatile example because it not only serves as an example as cylindrical coordinates in the x direction, but you could also do it directly in the z direction as well, you know, other than this complicated function. So it's another beautiful example. And you could also have stuff like find a volume of intersection between two cylinders. This is also a nice and juicy problem, which you can find on my channel. All right, and how do you teach triple integrals? Please let me know down in the comments. I appreciate it. All right, I hope you like this little teaching extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.